Hello and thanks for joining us from our studios in Israel. I'm Aaron Porras, here with ILTV's Morning Briefing. In yet another shocking reversal, the Israeli government has just scrapped its controversial plan to forcibly deport African asylum seekers from the country. As of this moment, all asylum seekers will be able to continue renewing their temporary visas to stay in the country. Those who were already sentenced to be deported will be notified that those orders are canceled. This is a sudden reversal in a controversial story that's had its ups and downs lately. Last week, the state maintained that a deal with Uganda to accept deportees was almost a done deal. But just yesterday, the state admitted to the high court that there is zero legal possibility of involuntary deportations. Hundreds of doctors, lawyers, Jewish congressmen, and even Holocaust survivors have called Israel's plan both immoral and dangerous. Asylum seekers previously deported to third-party countries have often fallen victims to human trafficking, extortion, or worse. For thousands of African men, women, and children living in Israel, who are mostly Christians from Eritrea and Sudan, today's news of the cancellation comes as a huge sigh of relief. Still, moments after nixing the deportations, Prime Minister Netanyahu took to Twitter promising to reopen prisons for African asylum seekers. These prisons were initially closed in order to greenlight the deportations in the first place, which means things have now essentially reset back to square one. A top Iranian official says that the regime plans a swift and decisive punishment against Israel in retaliation for an attack on the T-4 airbase in Syria that killed seven Iranian nationals earlier this month. Israel has neither confirmed nor denied carrying out that airstrike, but despite no official comment, army officials have hinted that the IDF has indeed been very active in Syrian airspace lately, specifically to keep the Iranian threat from Israel's borders. This threat from Tehran comes at a delicate time in Middle East affairs, a moment that could be a major turning point. Just yesterday, United States President Trump hosted French President Macron at the White House. Though the handshakes and hugs were cordial, the big issue on the table is the fate of the Iranian nuclear deal. President Trump has until May 12th to either renew American involvement in the deal or choose to withdraw from it. Such a move would likely cause the entire deal to collapse, and proponents of the deal argue that although it is imperfect, it does successfully keep nuclear weapons out of Iran's hands and allows watchdogs constant access to nuclear sites. Critics, however, which include Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu, say Iran gets too much from the deal and that it should be renegotiated or scrapped altogether. Macron is believed to have pleaded with Trump to remain in the deal considering the rest of the signatories remain committed to it and that there's no plan B alternative. With less than three weeks until the deadline to renew, the world is waiting on pins and needles to see what President Trump's decision will ultimately be. In a seldomly seen unanimous vote across the U.S. House of Representatives, the United States government has just passed a bill that will provide aid to Holocaust survivors and their families. The bill now only needs President Trump's signature to become law. More specifically, the law would help these victims and their descendants get restitution from European governments in the form of the return of stolen assets and or reparations. The legislation is today known as the Justice for Uncompensated Survivors Today, or the JUST Act, and it's already been welcomed wholeheartedly by both survivors and Jewish restitution organizations alike. According to Malaysian police, the two men suspected of killing a Hamas drone expert in Kuala Lumpur were still in the country. The duo who killed Palestinian Fadi al bach drove up beside him on motorcycle and fired at least 14 shots. al bach died at the scene and the alleged motorcycle was found abandoned near a lake a short distance away. Police have also updated the photographs of the suspects who were earlier described as being white males of either European or Middle Eastern origin. Hamas and al bachs family have both accused Israel of orchestrating an assassination, but Israel has not offered any official comment as per policy. Seven African-born individuals were charged with espionage on Monday in an Algeria criminal court. Supposedly, the group was, quote, spying for a foreign power and forming a criminal gang in the country, end quote, referring to Israel as the foreign power. One of the seven, a Lebanese-Liberian man, was sentenced to death. The remaining six were given fines of nearly 20 million Algerian dinar and sentenced to a decade in prison. All seven pleaded not guilty, but Algerian Interior Minister Nordin Bedoui said the arrest was proof of the Mossad's efforts to harm Algerian national security. The alleged spy ring was arrested and exposed back in January 2016. Ten arrests in total were made. That's all for now. I'm Aaron Porras, and see you later with our main daily broadcast from Israel at 2 p.m. Eastern Time.